Rock and roll has been forever ensconced in mystery. This is Dave Grohl talking, standing on stage at the 2013 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. But there's one mystery that surely eclipses them all. When did Rush become cool? From day one, the band built its following the right way. No hype, no BS. They did it from the ground up without any help from the mainstream press. Their influence was undeniable, and their devoted fan base is only rivaled by the Grateful Dead's. Their legacy is that of a band that stayed true to themselves no matter how uncool they may have seemed to anyone. I think it's safe to say that Rush is a band that has balls. The crowd in Cleveland whooped at every point that Dave Grohl made because that ceremony was packed with Rush fans waiting to see them inducted. And throughout the evening, they made their enthusiasm heard over and over again, inspiring John Mayer, another attendee that night, to comment, Man, I want Rush fans to come to my shows now. That is some fandom. For this Great Moments in Vinyl Online mini-concert, we want to give you a sample of what our live tribute to Rush was going to be like before COVID-19 came along and so rudely interrupted us. We plan to put the whole show on stage here at Martyrs when it's safe to do so. But for now, let us give you a little taste of what we have in store.
Mistakes happen. That's life. And while it's tempting to see them as a bad thing, the truth is they're only a bad thing if you don't learn from them. In 1978, Rush put out their album, Hemispheres, and somehow the band managed to lay down the entire music for that album without first figuring out whether the keys they put the songs in were keys that vocalist Getty Lee could actually sing in. It was just the worst two weeks of my life recording vocals, Getty told Rolling Stone in 2015. But that mistake gave the band a reason to look at what they were doing and take stock. According to Getty, They found they were becoming formulaic, just like all these bands that we can't stand. We do the overture thing, and then we do this theme and that theme. So we said, what if we take six minutes and try to do something that's more tuneful, but is still fucked up, with really complicated musical moments that have a different energy? That's when, he said, we started writing The Spirit of Radio and those kind of songs. Monday warrior, mean, mean stride. Today's Tom Sawyer, mean, mean pride. Though his mind is not for rent, don't put him down as arrogant. His reserve.
The album Permanent Waves opened the doors to a new way of making music for Rush. It was the end of the 70s, and all sorts of new sounds were pouring out of England. The Sex Pistols, The Clash, The Police. As drummer and lyricist Neil Peart recalls that period for himself and his bandmates in Rush, when punk and new wave came, we were young enough to gently incorporate it into our music, rather than getting reactionary about it, like other musicians who I heard saying, What are we supposed to do now? Forget how to play? We were fans enough to go, oh, we want that too. And by the album Moving Pictures, we nailed it. Learning how to be seamlessly complex and how to compact a large arrangement into a concise statement. Those concise statements paid off handsomely in boosting Russia's mainstream popularity. But in a 2018 interview with the Guardian newspaper, Getty pointed out that their initial prog rock roots attracted an overwhelmingly male audience. We would joke about it backstage, Lee told the interviewer. See any girls in the front row, one of the band would ask. No, someone else would reply. Some attractive boys and a lot of ugly boys. Getty continued. When things started changing, and they did, we noticed. There's girls in the front row. Or there'd be a sign in the back of the hall. Girls who love Rush. But, said Getty with a sigh and a laugh, we were too old to take advantage of it by that point.
There's a moment in the 2009 movie, I Love You, Man, when Paul Rudd's character forms a new friendship with Jason Segel's character, and it solidifies into a bromance when the two of them dis- discover that they both like Rush and attend a Rush concert together. And not just attend and listen, they start playing air guitar along with the band and then sing every word of one of the songs to each other. If you're a Rush fan, you've been there. If you're not, well, it gives you a peek into that world. In a 2015 interview for Loudersound.com, Getty Lee admits that movie definitely hit upon that thing of going to a show and letting go and enjoying the moment. And I think that's an important thing to remember when you love rock music, that there's a sort of freedom in allowing yourself that sense of abandon and just digging your band.
2013 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony wasn't just notable for what Dave Grohl had to say when Rush were about to be inducted. Neil Peart started off his acceptance speech with a great quote from Bob Dylan, and that's the thought we'll leave you with. The highest purpose of art is to inspire. What else can you do for anyone but inspire them? Thanks for joining us for this Great Moments in Vinyl online mini-concert. We hope that we've inspired you with these performances. Judith Weirich is our vocalist, Jared Donahue on guitar, Walter Kiefer on bass and keyboards, Jonathan Reed on 18 or 20 different drums, and I'm William Lindsay Cochran. You can keep track of upcoming Great Moments in Vinyl music events through our website, greatmomentsinvinyl.com, as well as through the Great Moments in Vinyl pages on Facebook and on Instagram. This performance was a labor of love, as you might guess, Jared and Walter are diehard Rush fans. Judith and Johnny, they just love to get up and make some music. But these days, all the gigs that they count on as performing musicians have evaporated. So when we do finally get a chance to put this Rush show on a stage somewhere, make sure you come see it. As musicians, they'd love to have your support. Club owners need your support. And after all we've been through this year, we all need more music in our lives. One final thought, the whole inspiration for doing this show was the passing of Rush drummer Neil Peart. So it's fitting that we close with a final thought from him. This one comes from an interview that he did on Canada's CBC Radio, and it pretty much sums up what we're about. Neil said, Music is about sharing your enthusiasm. And we couldn't agree more. 